folks. And you too, Chispa. I am for I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. And normally I'm here to talk about some some SmackDown. But wow. This was a weird show. Parts of it. The thing with weird SmackDown shows. Whoa. You just saw that, right? Parts are really good. Parts are not so good. But before I do that, I have to thoroughly embarrass a friend of mine. To Dan Lehman, congratulations. Angela Murdoch, I wish you every happiness. For these two are getting married. So, da 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 Yes. Well, I shouldn't put that. God knows who might actually show up. Yes. My good friend Dan is finally getting hitched, which is ironic because we always thought between the two of us, I would be first. And Angela, I wish you every happiness. Um, unfortunately, I can't be there. I have to work. I have to work tomorrow because I'm exhausted. I'm going to sleep because I got like six hours of sleep last night. So I was stupid. And then I work the race this Sunday. So I'll get into that a little bit later. So, but right now I want to talk about some SmackDown wrestling. And I figure out why I don't go to the one pizza place. Even though their pizza is actually really good. Jeez. It really shouldn't take 25 minutes to make a pizza. Especially just your basic pepperoni and sausage pizza. 25 minutes? Really? I guess there were reasons why I haven't been there in a while. And I do have to take care of some stuff at home. And sleep is good. I might make the coleslaw for tomorrow too. Tomorrow I'm not having bison burgers. And I think I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have coleslaw instead of french fries. I don't care. I'll have french fries forever anyway. That's okay, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here, here to talk about some smack on wrestling. And I was kind of upset because I got home a little bit late from the pizza place. Again, it shouldn't take 25 minutes. I won't mention them because I'll keep them safely anonymous. And tomorrow I have to shave too for work. Well, they get my white work pants, so I'm kind of happy about that. But it starts off with Biggie and John Morrison. I'll tell you what, I saw the recaps of this first match. It was really good. John Morrison, man, he's so fast. Oh, Johnny Mundo. I miss Johnny Mundo. But Big E, man, he's a beast. He's strong like anything. And then Retribution show up. And I thought they were like a raw thing, but they like to pick on SmackDown. This was not a good first match. In fact, this was a can of soup. It was good. That's about all you can say about it. And there's Baron Corbin. And he's like, I'll lead you. I'm going to be the Pied Piper. <laughs> of Smackdown. So he went from the Possum King to the Pied Piper. I don't know. Baron Corbin. Hey. They're paying him piles of money. He's probably saying, you give me piles of money, I'll be the freaking... King, king without clothes. So, hey, power to him. I'd be the king without clothes if they paid me hundreds of thousands of dollars, not millions, millions of dollars. I'd do that too. 
In fact, I would, if they gave me 50 bucks, I'd be a hobo tom for them. Well, that's neither here nor there, nor there though. Um, Big E then starts to call out <laughs> the smack, SmackDown wrestler says, we have to stop this. He says, we have to stop this Foot Clan from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Big E, I appreciate that reference. Um, so that was pretty good. And then we had Sasha Banks and Bailey. They were they cut a promo. And listen, Bailey, don't be a ring announcer. The reason is, if you're gonna be bad, it's you, you have to be Scott Steiner bad. You have to be. And oh, how how did it start off? All you trailer park trash boys and hookers, shut up because this is your main event. In this corner, I just know she has big tits. And in that corner, and her opponent from some trailer park in a trailer park. She just has a fat ass. And that's how Scott Steiner would do his ring introductions. Bailey, don't be a ring announcer. Stay a professional wrestler. Because uh, it wasn't that funny. They announced the Women's Battle Royal to see who gets to face Bailey on SummerSlam, which is a week from Sunday. And then, oh wow, is it actually going to be? I don't know. I don't think WWE knows, knows its days of the week. It was the first Sunday in September is the 6th. The 23rd, the 30th is the week after SummerSlam? I don't know. I'll have to double check some stuff, folks. Having pay-per-views that close together, especially a big four and something else, not good, though. So, here the ring introductions. The Iconics got introduced. Tegan Knox. Oh, wait a second. Stay right there, folks. I have to go get something. Let's see here, let me re-plug in stuff, find stuff. Yes, because it's this one, and the only Tegan Knox. So let's see here. Right, and the reason why I, I took that little time out is whenever Tegan Knox get, gets announced, even though she kind of swings ACDC, or swings AC now, Let's see where is she? Oh, there she is. Oh wait, Tegan Knox. Look at that, Tegan Knox. But who's that? That's me, Hobo Tom. Tegan Knox. Uh, she was. She got her formal introduction. Um, who else got a formal introduction? Shotzi Blackheart got a formal introduction because they had a triple brand battle royal to see who's going to face Bailey. Uh, Lacey Evans got her introduction. Then Asuka came out. And with Asuka came out, it just went to job or entrances. All the other rest of the women showed up. Um, see a little bit of the act. I'll go over the action first and the order of eliminations. Um, it's just it's your typical battle royal brawl. Um, Nikki does start stripping from Tamina. Tamina's too strong. Naomi and Lacey Evans, they get in the middle of the ring. They start, they, they showcase Naomi and Lacey Evans, which is good. I mean, battle royals tend to be like three ring circuses. You always want to pay attention to what happens in the middle of the ring because there's always like weird brawls and, and, 
and like like fake stuff going on the outside. Uh, let's see here. Shayna starts. She like tries to kill Shotzi Blackheart. Uh, Tegan knocks. Low bridges. Someone. Um, Tegan knocks as the suplex face bust, which is good. She cleans house again. Congratulations to this very special woman, whom I had the privilege of meeting for some reason, and it probably still embarrasses the heck out of her that for some reason she actually allowed herself to get a picture taken with me. I'm doing that so I can get to the picture. Oh wait. Oh, no. There she is again. Tegan Knox. Yes. I look way too happy in that picture this year. I'll just leave that up for now. I think I have... Did I have an autograph up there? Was this before I actually got autographs? I don't have her autograph. Darn it. Shoot. I don't care. I was Ailey's autograph. Only one I cared about anyway. But let's see here. Uh, she, so Tegan Knox cleans the house. Dana Brooke's still in. She actually never entered the ring to begin with, so she hasn't technically become a part of it. Um, then it's Shayna versus Asuka at the very end. Asuka's the best. Now Asuka takes on... Uh, she goes to the outside. On the apron, she takes out Sasha Banks and Bailey, and then when punched, she actually lands on Bailey and Sasha Banks. Good spot. I appreciate that. Asuka eventually tosses out Shayna. Asuka, all belts, Asuka. All hail, Asuka. We're not worthy, Asuka. We're not worthy, Asuka. We're not worthy. Um, the way the eliminations happen. Uh, is that Ruby Wright got eliminated first, followed by Billy Kay and then Peyton Royce. Eh, pretty close together. Liv Morgan gets, gets eliminated, then the four of them just starts a brawl. Nikki Cross gets eliminated after she strips a little bit. Uh, Tamina then is eliminated. Naomi gets tossed out. Lacey, Naomi gets tossed out, gets punched out from a woman's right by Lacey Evans. Then Lacey Evans, ding, she gets out of the ring too. Followed by Bianca Belair and then Tegan Knox, uh, Dana Brooks, and then Shayna. Asuka's the last woman standing. Again, I want to see Asuka with all the belts. If not, just let Asuka, Asuka leave. We'll have her go back to Japan with Kairi Sane. And just, just tell everyone that F you. Um, so, and then we go back commercial. Actually, for the most part, this was a cheeseburger match. I applaud it. Yeah, because that first match, even though I probably edited things in there, it was a pile of garbage. It was a can of soup. As you probably saw by the soup can. Not toast. I just didn't want to see them get interrupted. Then we have Sheamus versus Shorty G. Shorty goes right after Sheamus. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Sheamus, the, the 10 beats of, of Belfry, whatever that is. Uh, Shorty G, he's smart. He works over, he tries to work over the bigger guy's knee, setting up for the ankle lock, which could potentially get him the victory. It was a basement drop kick, and then begins to work over the knee. Sheamus, again, he just does a double axe handle smash. Oh. Nostalgia is awesome. Troy G does go, does go to the top rope for a missile drop kick. Sheamus hits a white white noise and bro kick. Ah, good match. Troy G, you did not did not get the job done against Matt Riddle, bro. This is a good match. A cheeseburger match.
And there's AJ Styles and Abyss. Oh, wow. For a second, I thought Bruce Pritchard. I'm like, sitting down, Abyss looks like Bruce Pritchard. But then when he stood up, I'm like, when, when, when did Brother Love get that tall? No, Abyss. Abyss. Oh, Joseph Parks. Thank you so much, sir. It's so good to see you in WWE do something. Um, so AJ Styles, who's better than AJ Styles? No one until Jeff Hardy comes out, gives his autograph on the big card. AJ Styles then realizes, hey, this is in permanent marker. You just can't wipe it off, AJ. Sorry. Uh, then we have Grand Metal League for um, Shinsuke Nakamura and, Shin and Cesaro on the on the back. Lucha House Party steal the belt. Wait a second. Is Lucha House Party becoming Yano's Chaos? Where they just steal the belt? And declare themselves champion? Indeed. Break! 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 Um, so then we have Grand Metal League versus Shinsuke Nakamura. This is good. Grand, Grand Metal League uh, has the advantage early with the head scissors. So fast is Grand Metal League. This is like when New Japan would face off with CMLL. This was actually pretty darn entertaining. Grand Metal League is so fast, but Shinsuke is a classic, strong style with those kicks. Um, and then we have Kalisto returning. Ole, 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 ole. Lucha, lucha, lucha. So that was really good to see Calista returns. Him and Lince and Lince Dorado double team on Cesaro. Shinsuke gets distracted. Grand Metal League does the rope walk elbow like he does. I'll tell you what. It was so good to see Kalisto and the Lucha House Party back. This was a fun match. It sets up. Maybe they will give Lucha House Party a tag team title shot. Indeed. This was a cheeseburger match. Oh, yeah, then we had uh, Mandy Rose um, challenge Sonya Deville to a hair versus hair match. Sonya Deville. Oh, Mandy Rose, first of all. Mandy Rose has to realize that she's a blonde living in Florida. If you're going to portray yourself as having a smooth skin, the first place it goes, I've noticed this on several ladies, is right around the cleavage. It's a little wrinkly. And, and, uh. Yeah. Unfortunately, Mandy Rose has spent too much time in the sun or the tanning booth. Because, yeah, that's beginning to affect you. As it does all blonde-haired women, and of course men with no hair, we have no effects. We just get a red head for a little bit, and that's it. So, yeah, blonde-haired ladies, if you come to Florida, like, be prepared to use, like, sunscreen, like, 500 plus. If not, be covered head to toe. Your skin will get wrecked by the Florida sun. Mandy Rose. See, Sonya Deville is safe from that because she has dark hair. Uh, but we'll get into that later. Uh, Matt Riddell and Shorty G, they have a chat, they have a talk. I don't know if Matt Riddell was distracted by Shorty G, but then Corbin jumps Matt Riddell from behind. Indeed. That'll probably be, hopefully, like the pre show match for SummerSlam. God, I hope SummerSlam isn't that ridiculously long. Now we have an Alexa Bliss interview, how everyone's, and she just says, everyone's changed by The Fiend. Yeah, I like Braun, but not in that way. Yeah. Braun got friend zone. <laughs> I feel better about my life now for some reason. So evil. And then Sonya Deville says, yes, I accept your, your, your Caberas, the Caberas match. Your hair versus hair match. I'm not looking forward to that for some reason. Mandy Rose would still look hot, bald. 
Selena Deville, which just looked like that bad word for a lesbian. Dyke. So, yeah. We'll see how that match goes. Then we get Big E versus John Morrison. Two, 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 two. Um, for the most part, it's pretty good. Again, John Morrison has to go Johnny Mundo. It just seems like he's holding back in the ring. And he's capable of doing so much, but he's also capable of doing so much more. Big E's just too strong. Uh, he thumps poor Johnny Mundo on the apron, hits the big splash on the apron. Uh, Otis shows up. Hey, Miz, you're a bad person. And he just he has a briefcase with him. I almost forgot Otis has that briefcase. I was waiting, and my prediction still has some time on it. So let's not go bonkers. I would predict that Otis would catch in the briefcase to help heavy machinery. They haven't done jack squat with Otis besides having him having him in a romantic angle with Mandy Rose. Yeah. Um, then the lights start to shade. They cut and retributions and catering. If you're gonna destroy all places. Why catering? Doesn't make sense. I don't know. And they spray paint the walls. It's like, obviously, you know what? There was no spray paint because obviously those cleaning crews do a darn good job. And then all the wrestlers that are ringside they want to protect this match. And then there is, oh, then everyone goes to catering and Retribution has left already. <laughs> It's like a Johnny Bill, Johnny, uh, Benny Hill. I'm sorry, I apologize, Johnny. Benny Hill chase sequence. Not the best look. Um, then again, there were shades of Johnny Mundo, but John Morrison also got caught in the stretch muffler by Big E. He has to tap out. Big E wins. Much better match than the first one. This is a cheeseburger match. Then Sheamus shows up for whatever reason. Um, Bronze Braun then shows up. Braun Strowman. Uh, Alexa Bliss shows up. She slaps Braun senseless. Not the brightest thing to do, Alexa Bliss. Because then Braun picks up poor little Alexa in the gorilla press. And you can tell, like, it's like, okay, we have to get this done. So initially he had her up here. The muscles do build up lactic acid. Like eventually she came down here and then he realizes it's like, oh well, I'll put you back up there. Lights went out. It's like, turn the lights out. This is this is long. And he tosses Alexa Plus down. Braun teleports out of the ring. Into the ring jumps the fiend. And Braun laughs. Fiend laughs. Alexa Bliss is just confused. And Actually, that was a pretty cool ending to SmackDown. It's beginning to tie things together. And overall, eh, it was a, you know what? I don't like this retribution nonsense. This was a ham sandwich of a SmackDown. That was SmackDown for a Saturday night. And I get to relax, and I'm going to sleep soon. So next week's schedule, Monday, it's going to be your typical Monday Night Raw. Tuesday is Tuesday live streaming for Impact Wrestling. Wednesday, Wednesday, there is no AEW. I am not watching AEW. I am going to... What am I going to do? Oh, there's going to be some racing videos because I get to work the races this weekend. We'll get to see all the new things they've implemented. I have signed my life away to NASCAR. 
So if I get sick and die, NASCAR can say, next. So that should be interesting. I, I honestly just hope I get some like NASCAR inspired like face mask and I'd be happy. Because I had to wear it to my other job and just mock my other job too. Saying, we could have done this. But that's okay. So Wednesday is going to be pretty simple. That video will be up there pretty quick, folks. Trust me. Thursday. It's going to be predictions. I'm either going to have Dr. Tom or El, El Vagabundo Cinco Hobo. Show up, do predictions for both TakeOver, which will be Saturday. Oh, that's right. Uh, SummerSlam, which will be Sunday. So, yeah, and then Saturday I'll be... Reviewing, I'll make a video review of NXT or as much as I can. The same will be true Sunday the 23rd. I'll put up my review video eventually. And then it's a kind of a normal week that next week. Um, I have not heard any news about when Triple Mania is going to be. If it's going to be. I hope it's going to be. So when I get that news, I will let you, the YouTube audience, know. That is one of my best shows ever. Other than that, again, where did I put that thing? Congratulations, YouTube.